there and welcome to my channel Hisama Artwork. In this video I'm going to try and go over the five silly things that people say to artists. This is going to be a free part video. In the first one I'm going to go over my personal pet peeves and then the next from the peers and lastly from the community. So the goal of this video is to try and educate and help people out because uh, you might not be part of the art industry and you don't know how it is and sometimes people say things with good intentions but actually can come off a bit um, rude, insulting or irritating. So hopefully uh, with this video series you'll be able to have like a better understanding as how to talk to an artist without um, causing any issues. So one of the first things I want to tackle is when people say it's not a real job, um, and it's especially egregious to me when I hear moms say this to their daughters. Fortunately, it hasn't been my case, but I've seen people do these things to their um, kids, and especially when it's a mom saying this to their daughter. Uh, my speculation is that it comes from a place of fear. Um, often the art industry has this a uh, reputation of being insecure, especially in uh, the U.S. I am from Europe and I've never really gotten this uh, issue, mostly because we have better protection for workers and also uh, we have a lot of churches. So uh, <laughs> painting art for churches is like a really old job that's very important. So. Um, where I am, it might not be as bad as where you are. So this is kind of something that I wanted to help you guys out and kind of explain what's going on. And I've given on the left here uh, five examples of artists that have modern day jobs. Like I've worked as a graphic designer for a lot. Um, I've worked as um, a 2D artist in the gaming industry. So um, these are real jobs that you can... Uh, earn a real living and pay taxes and things like that. So, up to the next one. Oof, this one's uh, a bit uh, spicy. So, anime is not art. And I even heard this from fellow artists and I really don't get the logic. First of all, art doesn't really um, have much of a definition. Like, you can take a rock off the street and put a label on it that says art and that's pretty much it. You've made natural art uh, and it's awareness to the nature and blah 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 like you can spin this every which way you can make anything art so I have no idea where this comes from I really don't understand it I've mostly seen people that have been able to articulate some reasons um, and those are they don't like how it looks and uh, there's a lot of types of anime and some of them look gorgeous um one of my favorite is uh, Vampire Hunter D, the uh, anime film, and it's such beautiful art in motion. It's really gorgeous. And of course, everybody loves Avatar The Last Airbender, uh, the American anime. So if you guys had any thoughts on it, can you explain to me better what's going on? Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, another thing I wanted to... Um, go into is the question, the uh, condescending question. Uh, you do that or did, did the computer do it? So I've seen it be uh, expressed in a rude, um, aggressive and um, kind of trying to rile you up way, but also I've had it from elderly people that don't seem to understand how um, modern technology works and it's really strange whenever you hear that. Um, my questions, my responses to both kinds of people are yes I did, uh, I did the art, um, a computer is like any other tool, um, like did you build that house <laughs> or did the hammer do it kind of situation you know. And then when you have like really rude people that want proof, I'm like, okay, I charge $20 an hour at this point in time. Um, this price is before taxes and does not include shipping. You need to pay that separately. Priority goes to people that pay up front and you're lucky I'm cheap, that cheap compared to other artists. And I live in East Europe, so $20 an hour is 
very fair compared to the fact that I have to pay all of my equipment, all the software, the electricity, the water and everything because I'm a freelancer. So yeah, you're lucky I'm only charging you that much for the proof. I do not work for free. <laughs> I need to eat. I'm a human being. So that's one way you can handle those type of people. Um, another kind of people that um, are maybe well-intentioned, but are kind of grifty and a bit shady. So, you know, be careful with them. Um, I think they generally mean well when they say you should sell this, but uh, what I find it hilarious and kind of confusing is, but like, no, 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 not to me. And they want uh, free art all the time. You know, they always pirate films and things like that. Um, they will say, oh, yeah, no, I really love your art. And then they go and buy from somebody else, even though they were like pushing you to sell yours. It, they're a very confusing type of person. Um, also, they always kind of seem to be going on for a scheme of some sort, kind of like the people that sell vitamins sort of personality. And uh, be careful when they push you to do kind of like illegal stuff, like sell your stuff at the flea markets or at the corner of the street and what taxes you don't need to worry about taxes. Why should we ever pay taxes? So um, I don't know how it is for every country, but where I am, um, not only do you have to have permits and pay taxes and a whole, a whole bunch of other stuff like that. We even have like an extra artist tax. Um, if you do things that are illegal, you're going to get a fine. So that's the situation where I am. might be different where you live. Uh, for example, in the U.S., if you sell uh, for under $600 per year, uh, you don't have to pay taxes for that, but I don't know if it's in every state. Um, I lived in the U.S. for five years, so that was kind of the thing for that state. Always check what legislation you have in your country and what taxes and what not. So, like, don't um, just listen to one person that's really encouraging you. Yeah, you're going to make lots of money. You should sell this. Or they say, say stuff like, oh, you just have to believe in yourself. And I haven't heard this text from Europeans, but I've definitely heard it from Americans. And it's definitely a nice sentiment. But generally, you should kind of have a plan about how to start your business. I think it's a good idea to look into it. Accounting stuff. I know it's boring. Legislative stuff. I know it's boring. But if you're going to start a business, you should look that stuff up. And other people will like um, try and give you advice, even though they have no idea about the industry and how it works. And they think, oh, you know, it's easy. You just do it on your computer from home. Um, they'll say, oh, use Etsy or Patreon or Amazon or whatever. And if you're a beginner artist, personally, I don't recommend these um, websites. I have made videos on other websites that I think are better for um, beginner indie artists to start their business or start selling or get their stuff off the ground. And so you can go check those out if you're interested. And the last one, um, this is, I would say, uh, from people that are very well intentioned, but they might not understand how things really work. So I'm going to go over, um, try and explain it. How I think it's really, you know, good and nice to say this to a kid. I don't see any issue saying that to a child or even a teenager. But uh, if you're talking to like a experienced seasoned artist that has made <laughs> enough money to buy a house and pay all their education and everything like that, um, it can be, it can come off as a bit tone deaf maybe. So um, let me go into it how it's so much. Uh, work and that has to go into it and a lot of the time it's you know uh luck as to who you meet and when you meet and how much they like you and you guys get along and also um there are more uh social political things that kind of go into um how much success you can have as an artist and how well the industry is thriving at that moment 
Um, there are plenty of nice analyses on the anime and cartoon industries and how the production has fluctuated over the decades. Like a lot of people say, oh, you know, the, uh, cartoons were so good in the 90s. Well, um, in some countries that do make a lot of cartoons, uh, the financial situation was better during that period. So studios were more likely to invest in um more artsy project, more risky projects, and things like that, because every time they have a flop um, at the box office, they have to have other wins in, uh, with other films to kind of cover the, the losses. So uh, things can get complicated, and I'm just giving examples from the cartoon industry because I went to um, film school and I worked as an animator and as an artist in general. So when you say I can never do that, um, often it can come off, the subtext can be that, oh, you know, I just don't want to put in the work to gain the skills necessary to do the art that you're doing. So um, that can be a bit of something that an artist might be thinking. So I would generally avoid and just stop at you are so talented or you're so skilled, I think would be better compliment to make. You're so good at doing your job, something like that. Um, it's so easy for you. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you are talented, things are going to be easier for the thing that you are talented in. And uh, if you also enjoy it, you can dedicate your life to that um, type of work. So it's kind of a cycle, a positive feedback loop. Um, so, I mean, it's partly true, but also, like I said, there is a lot of work that goes into it. How do you do it? Um, often people kind of say that a bit sarcastically. Um, and also it can be an issue like um, taking time to teach someone. Uh, might, might not be something that they want to do or have the time to do it, you know, and especially in, might not want to do it for free. So... Um, I guess you can ask that if you're, um, friends with that artist, uh, depends on the person, um, you'll be rich and famous. Uh, this is another thing that I don't know why people push it. I think it's part of their, um, culture or education or environment that these things are valued above, I don't know, skill or quality or things like that. I think they, it comes from a positive place to say that to people that they have a good opinion of them. Um, also, it can be a bit disheartening to some artists if they are very skilled and good and they're aware of their um, skill, but they're not rich and famous. And there are other artists that aren't that great, that are rich and famous. So it can kind of feel to some artists like um, they're being degraded or um, they failed because they haven't achieved the rich and fame thing, even though um, they are skilled or maybe they'll think, oh, I'm not skilled enough because I'm not rich. So um, I think, again, you can just stop at, wow, you're so good <laughs> at uh, drawing things. You're so talented. Um, you can offer to buy their art if it's something you can afford and if there's something they're selling and things like that. I think that will be um, a good morale boost to that artist if you want to help them out. And the last one uh, can be a bit toxic. Like some people are just born lucky. Uh, as if all of that skill and hard work and talent ha wasn't earned. Um, it was just something that was handed to them. Uh, they don't deserve it or things like that. Like that can be the subtext an artist can understand from what you're saying with that sentence. So, and uh, it is partly true. Um, obviously, if you're born in a country where it has peace and prosperity and legislation that protects copyright and other things like that, they're going to be doing better off uh, if they have access to education um, because their parents pay taxes. So it's sometimes called uh, like free education, but it's not completely <laughs> free. You, somebody in your family did pay for that. So, um, 
yeah, I guess you can call it luck, you can call it privilege, you can call it whatever you want, but at the end of the day, um, there's still a lot of work that has to be put into um, the art. So saying that some people are just born lucky can uh, elicit a negative reaction from that artist and shut down any further conversation because you've made them feel bad. So if uh, you wanted to have a positive a reaction from the artist you can just say oh you know you are so good at it do you mind uh, teaching me because as you've seen on YouTube there are plenty of tutorials on how to draw and if it's something particular you find with that artist and you don't find a tutorial on another youtubers channel you can ask them for a tutorial see if they're open to it if it's something they would be willing to do to teach you for free or, if, for example, they have equipment, they have expensive paints, they have <coughs> a better financial situation than you, and you cannot afford the equipment to be an artist as good as them. Um, you can say, oh, you know, I wish I could have uh, all the awesome paints and all the awesome equipment that you have, but, you know, I'm poor, um, whatever word you want to use to describe your financial situation say you can't afford it where you live or something like that you can ask hey would you consider doing a art giveaway or oh, a supply giveaway or something like that and you know if it's a big uh, youtube channel they might be already doing it if it's a smaller one if it reaches a certain milestone they might give away stuff like um um, doing giveaways is very popular on YouTube anyway. I'm not sure for other platforms. So it might be something that you can talk to that artist or suggest to them. And I'm sure a lot of them will be willing to do it if it is within their financial means. A lot of uh, YouTubers want to give back to the community that supports them so much. So you can be active on their page make them aware of your um, existence, of your support, and generally gratitude follows and they do a lot of art giveaways. Like for example, I'm going to um, do an art giveaway when, uh, sorry, <laughs> yes, art giveaway when I reach um, a thousand subscribers on YouTube because then I'll be able to unlock a whole bunch of other features on uh, YouTube and I'm going to be giving away some art that I draw. So, um, be uh, aware of that. You can follow me on other social media. I do our giveaways whenever I reach a milestone. I always try and give back to my community that supports me. So yeah, if you have any other questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And uh, hopefully I get to 1,000 1, subscribers on YouTube soon because I have always loved doing these art giveaways and yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.